Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about the big map change article that WizKids released, as well as answer some listener questions. This is episode 450. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. Now, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5. For five percent off your cool stuff ink order. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, you call it a big map change, but I, I think it's more of a smaller <laughs> map change. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fair. That is pretty fair. <laughs> yeah, those whiz kids people are a bunch of squares. <laughs> hey, oh dang! These are references to the map news. <laughs> yeah, which we'll we'll get to uh, here in a little bit. Simeon, what made you happy this last week, my man? Oh, man. Uh, not a whole lot. It snowed again. Oh, uh, it did. It's, like, been real cold. This next week's going to be even colder. Uh, didn't do a whole lot outside of, like, work and uh, just, you know, got some things on my 3D printer, like some stuff, like, printed out, um, getting that, like, still fine-tuning here and there. It's like the troubleshooting's getting easier. Uh I'm doing my first set of prints with the glow in the dark uh, PLA, so Ooh. that that'll be fun. So it's UV reactive. We'll see how well that actually works out, but uh, I'm excited to do that and use the the translucent one. I got a translucent blue, and I'm not sure what oh. I'll do with it, but they both look cool. So that sounds really cool. Making your own blue constructs over there or something. The translucent blue. It sounds yeah, neat. I'll print out like a big old blue phoenix. Because I don't Ooh. have enough of those in my box. Yeah. No, you clearly don't. <laughs> Nobody has a bunch of just blue phoenixes. It's like some kind of big uncommon or something. Who knows? Gosh. All right. Right on. That is awesome. Yeah. Nothing crazy for this week for myself either. Probably the biggest thing was... I finished Better Call Saul, or what they have on Netflix, and I didn't realize it's six seasons. So I went out to Best Buy, bought season six for forty-five dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, it said twenty-seven ninety-nine on the shelf. Bring it up to the cashier. She's like, "Oh, I've got to scan this one." I'm like, "All right, fine, whatever." She scans it, and it's like forty-five bucks, and I'm like, "Ah, I really don't want to be, you know, one of those people." But it did say twenty seven ninety nine on the shelf, like where it was, and she was like, "Ah, well, you know, this is what it says on our website." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, fine. I mean, fine." She was like, "Well, maybe that that was probably the price of the the steel book or something, you know." And I'm like, "Ah, I, I guess so. Sure." So I, I reluctantly bought the last season of Better Call Saul on Blu-ray, and about halfway through that, that's been fun. That's been great. I got, uh, I didn't bring any tennis shoes down here with me, and I was like, oh, shoot, I didn't even think about that, you know? So I went and I got some tennis shoes, and I got the Reebok Lex Luthor, not Re, yeah, no, Re, Reebok Lex Luthor workout shoes, which are really cool. Uh, they look like green kryptonite. They have, like, green glowy... Uh, bottom of the shoe soles thank you and they kind of have jagged like green and gray stitching with just a hint of purple not too much because you don't want to look too much like the joker you know with, uh, with the green and purple nothing crazy but so yeah so my new tennis shoe of choice i'm not like a sneaker head guy like i'm not like hey yo you got the 1837 jordans or whatever you know you got the Airfly cushion sole uh, flappers or something i don't know what tennis shoe people but like buying like two three hundred dollars something pairs of shoes these were like 80 bucks 
but they're just kind of neat, right? Because they're like nerd related. I got my I got my Lex Luthor workout shoes, which are just I don't know. I think they're funny. The last shoes I bought uh, were my Adidas Mega Man shoes, but then those ones you really couldn't do anything in because then you would crease you'd crease the toe as the as the sneaker heads would say. So you just they're like a walk around shoe, but you can't actually do anything that would bend the toe, like run or I don't know, crouch or something. So. So yeah, so these shoes are pretty sick. Just got those in today. They look dope. Can't wait to like mess around with them. My it's so, like now I can I can combat every dude in the gym that's like got like a Superman T-shirt, and I'm like I got the the Kryptonite Lex Luthor shoes. Look at me, I'm I'm edgy. I'm like the anti you. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I remember, which is yeah. Uh, this is like not even close to like that, but I remember picking up a. Jeez, I can't even remember from where, but I picked up a Red Skull shirt just to be like, ooh, or this at like a tournament. And this was yeah, back in <laughs> like 20, 2016 or 17 or something. And then shortly yeah. after it, just like the way it, like, it's very uh, World War II propaganda poster kind of like style. Ooh. And it's like immediately after, like, I like saw it, I was like, I can't actually wear this in public. Like, this is. <laughs> Like, I, I don't know. I don't know why I bought it. I thought it'd be funny if you wore a Captain America shirt, which you tend to do at, like, tournaments. Right. And then I'd wear, like, my... I do, yeah, shirt. usually. But, uh, yeah, I was like, I don't actually want people to think that I enjoy this character. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a tougher one where it's like, yeah, I'm, like, the opposite. It's like, yeah. oh, the opposite's not great, though. It's yeah. not like Venom to Spider-Man, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, it's not like it's... the Joker. Like, oh, I'm crazy. Right. Yeah, real yeah. Sigma over here. Uh, no, <laughs> turns out Red Skull is uh, a real bad guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real, <laughs> real not good, not good dude. Yeah, yikes! Oh goodness gracious, it's hilarious. Uh, but like you had the little little Red Skull guy, the little uh, yeah, Dorb or little Chachki toy guy. That one was that was funny. I can't remember. Did like that? Where he came from either. Yeah, his little head pops off. So I used to oh, keep no. it in my um. HeroClix box as like a marker, but now I don't know where it's at. Now he's just lost to the wind. All right, do you want to do a, a Marvel Snap check in at all? See where you're at, Simeon. Ooh, I have not. I have not been doing so hot. Oh uh, no. Okay. Haven't been doing bad. Just uh, been more focused on like missions, which that, that's how I normally play. Anyhow, like I get my missions done for the day, and then I usually like only play one or two more games after that. Um, Luckily, it takes me a real long time to get my missions done, so I actually do put in a decent amount. But uh, let's see. My newest acquisitions, I got um, I got Giganto. That was like the, the newest, newest one. So Ooh, finally okay. got Giganto. He's the old 614, can only be played on the left side, but obviously you put him in like a discard deck or something with like Jubilee or Lockjaw. To like sneak him in for real easy points or real easy mm. power. Power, um, yeah. I picked up Beast, which I don't know how I feel about Beast. I've been trying to run him with like Lockjaw, but I'm not not sure how it's supposed to be played. I don't know if I have the right cards. So I don't have Wasp. I have Yellow Jacket. That is the mm. like, the worst version of Wasp. There's a game yeah, bad Wasp. I played Beast and or no, I played a uh, Lockjaw and yellow jacket and then like yellow jacket turned into beast so lockjaw got returned to my hand next turn i played beast and um quicksilver and quicksilver turned into yellow jacket giving my lock oh my a gosh. zero <laughs> zero attack. Uh, but i've just kind of been messing around ramp decks haven't been working in my favor lately um my opponents just have i mean i've been getting chang chied a lot chong chied Oh dang! Uh, out the wazoo. That's, so that sucks. Yeah, it's like hard to like win when you have one turn that just gets like wiped out. Um, but yeah, mostly been having fun with like Thanos. I am currently at thirty nine and a half. So I've dropped from I got up to forty two. I've dropped down three ish. Ooh. So dang, that is uh, that's tough. That's. Uh... We're, we're, what are we doing? We're supposed to be going forward, you know. Like it's yeah. that's not what we want to be happening at all. So, well, that is that is a bummer. Yikes! I've 
not much. I mean, I'm, I'm already at infinite, so it's just kind of like chill, do whatever. I finally decided to count up all my pixels. I think I'm at 26. I have 26 pixel cards right now, which is pretty solid. So nowhere near having them all. I don't really want them all. I want like a majority of the ongoing ones and then the ones that work for like Patriot and stuff. So that's fun. Oh, my biggest highlight this week was actually getting another variant of Captain America. That was like the biggest one was I got the, and I forget the artist, but it's the 695, 695 issue to like 712 or something was this Captain America run. And the first split I got on it was gold background with yellow Kirby crackle. But the coolest thing was that once you just get it to the animated part, even when it's normal, the animation for the card, and usually a card is like, oh, the flames or something move a little bit, and maybe their their arm kind of flutters or their hair moves or something. But this dude's animation isn't any of that. It's actually, it then gives him an old school TV film, like 1920s-ish, 1940s TV film um whatever you would call it, that effect where it's kind of got like the lines yeah, the, are going, the little dots are like, like kind of scattering. Or, yeah, it's like thing. a projector reel. Yeah, it's it looks really freaking cool. And it's like the first split was like gold. And I'm like, I need to get this in black and white. And sadly, the next split was like normal rainbow background with some stuff floating around or whatever. And I'm just like, no, no, we need to be going forward, not backwards. We need to, I want to see this so bad in black and white. So it's just a really it's really cool artwork and it looks really it looks really freaking awesome and it was from a run that i really liked because that run was right after secret empire which obviously if you're a captain america fan you're probably not a big fan of secret empire and how that story even existed so this was such a return to form you know villain of the week going through small town america on on the motorcycle seeing what's good what's what captain america getting more in touch with american values and stuff and just it had really nice and really simple artwork that is what you like what you wanted after all the weird complicated garbage that was like secret empire and everything civil war two and all this stuff that was happening it was just very nice simple plain looking comic but just really good artwork so it's that artwork it's a dope card. It has a cool effect that I've never seen before at all. Like, usually an animated effect is just like, ooh, this part kind of wiggles or something. So the fact that it, like, has that TV effect, that old-timey TV is really, really cool. So that's it. That's all I've got to really say about my Marvel Snap Week. That was just a big thing was scoring that variant. I think, like, two steps closer, like, two or three more cat variants, and I'll get them all, which is cool. But all right. We have some news, Simeon. Some kind of, some kind of big news. Big. Well, I keep saying big, uh, but you're right. It's bringing things down. It's actually small. Uh, big in the fact that it is impactful. Small in the fact that it is quite literally making something smaller. So, if you have the article pulled up, this is the 2023 rules update number two article. Yeah. The impact Mapping to it map. Out. Impact Wild to maps. So uh, they say, Greetings, Heroclix masterminds. As previously discussed, starting with the upcoming Marvel Heroclix Spider Man Beyond Amazing set, we'll be implementing a number of rules changes mostly focused on making terrain more dynamic aspect of the game. In today's article, we will communicate how this will affect map design going forward. In broad strokes, the changes to map design are less symmetrical maps, which is great, less terrain clutter, which they get into why that is, but it's obviously so that you can drop your own terrain. And then a more action-focused map size. Uh, so yeah, big news, small maps. Starting with the biggest yeah. news, the size of standard Heroclix maps is changing from the current 2 foot by 3 foot to 2 foot by 2 foot. The same size as a Battle Royal map, which I don't know if you've ever played like a normal game on a Battle Royal sized map, but... Me and Calder have. It, it goes real fast. Like You are <laughs> yep. right into the action. Uh, before we go further, to be clear, existing 2 by 3 maps will remain legal and modern for as long as their sets are legal. So, obviously, a 2 by 3 map that's 16 squares wide, 24 squares long-ish, 
or I guess you can determine width and length however you want. But yeah, so those will remain legal and modern for as long as their sets are legal. For a time, maps of both sizes will be legal to play, and the new rules we're about to discuss for starting areas will not apply to the larger maps. Condensed maps will get in, uh, get games into the action faster and will allow for terrain markers to have a greater impact since they'll make up a larger fraction of the map's area. To make room for terrain markers, we're also slightly scaling back the amount of printed terrain on maps. Um, the only thing I have to say about that so far is I mean, one, it's, like, wild. It's wild that, like, we're yeah. going from that 2x3 two to 2x2. Two two, and uh, we'll get into, I think once we're done with the whole article, we'll get into, like, figures and stuff that is going to be vastly different or play vastly right. different. Um, but I will say uh, on them removing some of the terrain from maps, scaling back the amount of printed terrain, I hope they don't, like, end up looking real plain. Because we've gotten a few maps where it just looks... Like nothing's going on, so I hope it's not like that. Right. From the the one that they show in the d- example, it's fine. It's like cool and thematic, but not a ton of terrain kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, and they continue. Uh, this may seem a shocking change, but there's a number of tweaks we're making on design end to help the transition. Average speed and range values will update accordingly with this change and the minimum range for any standard power or team ability that has one that has one is being changed from 6 to 4. So uh, anytime mm. it would reference uh, close or range, minimum 6 range, it'll now say minimum range 4. So that'd be, I think, in cap, mind control, TK. Um, barrier, smoke cloud. Yeah, barrier, smoke cloud. Um, uh, perplex stuff like has that. a minimum. I oh yeah, perplex outwits. Those all have minimum six, so now already... minimum four. Yeah, so those those would be yeah Which minimum. Four. Used to be minimum ten, you know, like way way back in the day. Yeah, those wild. all used to have like a ten minimum range. Yeah, now it was like six. Now now we are down to four. I guess same thing would be. I assume outsiders will probably get a change because outsiders is like range six then they can't use like can't positively modify a combat value so i assume that'll go down to four as well yeah so obviously so, things like hmm. that's minimum um certain powers allow you to use like whatever your printed range would be so uh their their example is mind control where the minimum is now going to be four range instead of six but obviously if you have a character with like a printed six you can still mind control at six squares um which we'll get into how like somebody with like a 10 range almost sees to the other side of the map. We'll get into that later. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, for new figures with the values above those averages, you may see their point values increased to more than in previous sets to account for those higher numbers. Alpha strike strategies were a concern we had to keep in mind with this change, which is valid. Uh, But between the speed and range reductions, larger maps will remain an option and the changes to the starting area rules we found that Alpha Strikes did not become an overpowering strategy during playtesting. We will continue to monitor Alpha Strike strategies moving forward. So that was my first thought with this is like, if I have, you know, like a Green Lantern taxi drop-off team, it now takes me, let's see, we're going from 24 to 16, so it takes me yeah, eight less like movement to get all the way to where I want to go kind of thing. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my math's out in my head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, eight yeah. Less, yeah. Eight <laughs> less movement. So you're starting in square two, as you always would. Um, and the Well, on of... these maps, we don't get to start on square two. We get oh, to start on square right. one. That's a big thing. Yeah. So, yeah, we should get into that, I guess. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, they're keeping in mind, like, alpha strikes, obviously. So what they mean by for new figures, uh, figures probably coming out in this set and then future sets, um their values, their speed and range values are probably going to be lower on average, or if they're not be lower, lower yeah. average, they're going to have higher point values, which we've seen some, like, I think legacy cards are the biggest one where there's oh, like dude. some wild printed like range values. Um, but yeah, so where to I mean, start? With at- this, with this change, it's like, yo, get, get all your, your dream picks for legacy figures. Get those bot, man, because yeah. 
I feel like they might, I don't know if they'll dominate the game, but I mean, their range is going to be I think eight to 10, you know, some yeah. wild ranges. So yeah, I've got, I've got a couple might be picks worth it. that got some wild ability Yeah, no, uh, for sure. on the new size. So uh, having a perfectly square map has enabled us to tweak starting areas. Purple starting areas are being partially retired and will only be used for battle royal maps. For one-on-one -on -one games using a 2x2 two -two maps, players will not start in purple starting areas if the map even has them. Rather, players will use an edge of the map as their starting area, and all characters on their force begin on that edge. For any effects that reference a starting area, squares along the chosen edge or squares along the chosen edges will count as a starting area. Combined with the push to make maps less symmetrical, being able to choose different orientations for the same map can lead to wildly different play experiences. We're saving uh, the real nitty-gritty of rules for next week's articles, but we can summarize the map choice and set up here. So initiative is also being changed. So after rolling for first player, whoever wins the roll gets to choose between being the first or second player. The reason you might want to choose second player is because the second player gets to choose the map. So no longer yeah, is first wild. player win map roll get to pick map and go first first player chooses which edge they'll use so yeah second player gets to pick the map first player gets to choose one of the four edges that they're going to use uh, as their starting area place their force and terrain marker then second player uses the opposite edge as their starting area and places and forces their force and terrain markers and then once setup is complete the first player begins their first turn so it's yeah, it's like the entire border is now up for grabs. Uh, winning the map roll means you don't know which map you're going to go on. Or being the first player, I guess, winning the map roll <laughs> right. gives you the ability to choose. But it uh, doesn't necessarily give you the map that you want if you want to go first. Uh, and with that, uh, yeah, the first player getting to choose the edge, you kind of get a... I mean, you get to pick which of the three you go or like which of the four you would go on or which of like the four you want your opponent on like if there's a right really bunched up area with like a bunch of elevated and stuff and you want to force your opponent on that side that's kind of cool but especially with asymmetrical maps i think it's going to be kind of a wild thing to test out i think it's awesome that's probably the change i like the most where since we have to be on the BR maps, the choose any side is really freaking cool, especially when it's a non-symmetrical. And even if they were still making symmetrical maps, that at least gives you two totally different maps to play on, you know, even if they were symmetrical, you know, versus like, oh, this is always the starting area. You know, choosing any side is just, I don't know, I think it's really cool. I think that adds so much more playability now to every map that's going to be made here in the future which is really cool because now there's just four different ways to play on the map. Really, I mean, me coming from this way or that way, if they're all going to not be symmetrical, it's yeah. it's really freaking cool. I one, like it a lot. One thing I will say, like when playing and like sealed or like whatever, uh, if I don't bring maps to like a venue and I end up playing on the same map like three <laughs> games in a row, it gets real, <laughs> yeah. it gets real boring. Like I yeah. get used to it and I figure out like, okay, this is where I go. This is what I do. But potentially having a different side every time, might not shift it up that much, but it might. Um, I will say I'm not a huge fan of the starting area only being one square because there's like things like Ultron and uh, like effects where you get to your yeah. starting area, and now that starting area is smaller. It's like now just a row mm -hmm. or a column. But I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to play it and see. I guess. I'm assuming they'll still expand. Assuming like you play a like a two by two or whatever uh, on the off chance. Somebody runs something like 10 giant girls or 20 giant girls. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. And no kidding. Just fills up to like the opponent's side of the map. That is another like problem. I guess you could talk about these, them being so short already. How, how big can I make my starting area, you know, in silver age with 10 point giant girls and just lining the entire back of the map? Like, well, looking will at we the, just be, uh, instantaneously you know right up like am i going to be a charge away from you yeah you know what i mean like 
Uh, that was already a five problem squares away with like the i mean not it wasn't a huge problem uh hedge maze right yeah, with or hedge something maze, like on hedge maze yeah you could uh fill up like your starting area pretty easily and start expanding out like almost to the center of the map or maybe it was to the center yeah. of the map but looking at the example they have on here uh there's like a ferris wheel looking thing or not that's not a ferris wheel that's a it's something i know what you mean yeah uh, yeah the the one that goes up not around um uh, yeah, that's a Ferris wheel, right? It looks like a Ferris wheel. Yeah, no, it looks like a I'm Ferris wheel to me. Go around for whatever. But reason. it's yeah. this, okay. Yeah. It's on like a pier, uh, but it's what like three by six blocking. Uh, yeah, and just basically totally. Cuts, yeah, six squares of the uh, separates your area. team in half. It's wild. Yeah, so like if if your team isn't like five people or something it's gonna have to be on the other side and then if if it's more than like i don't know 10 or so i guess for however much this takes up you have to start expanding it's so like that's really interesting how the chances um, of you so being... yeah just the fact that there's just junk in your way instantly yeah. you know like oh uh, you probably a rough be side to get second player and choose this map without being able to play on that side <laughs> right, that's true <laughs> like you would you would hope you wouldn't keep this map with you yeah and be like oh that's right I can't play on this side of the map because it like yeah. ruins my uh, team. But yeah, if you did get stuck on this side, I can see um, larger teams definitely having to expand out of the starting area. Yeah, I will say another problem with like just talking about the the last row, whatever being your your entire starting area, right? Just the last edge that does make it hard in another case for Alpha Strike teams where it's like okay, Green Lantern team ability, I can carry eight people. Uh, two people can start adjacent to me, and right. then a handful of people can move or sidestep next to me. Uh, three for max, yeah. so a max of five people can be carried by a Green Lantern. You know, unless the Green Lantern themselves sidesteps over and then can make plenty of space to carry the eight people. But that's a lot of sidesteps you have to use early on versus Whereas, when you would yeah, get dropped with a off. Starting formation, you position instantly yeah. have like five surrounding you, that five people that could be surrounding you. Right. That's, yeah, that is so, true. Also, just line of fire for like TK and stuff. Like, you will have to be. Yep. You'll have to be right next if you want to like get an early TK off. Um, obviously, there's no need to like TK equipment to your characters anymore, at least not usually. But right, uh, yeah. if you want to send somebody out real fast, you'll have to be adjacent to the person or you'll have to have access to like sidestep or something to get into line of fire. So yeah, that is it is going to be a Congo line of like really no yeah. longer can I uh see everybody to like get all my perplexes and all that kind of stuff like you might have to make some costed actions to move people around to do some carrying and stuff for sure. All right. Uh just to finish it up, they go on with strategic impact. While this change to the maps is very light on rules tweaks, it has some significantly <laughs> positive changes for the game's strategy. Both first and second player have a hand in map choice now, with second player choosing map, but first player getting to pick their orientation and having the first opportunity to modify it with terrain markers. Likewise, second player can respond with terrain of their own to make sure the map is balanced between the players. With a smaller map size, players can get to the action faster, terrain choices matter more, and maps are more customizable. Which I agree. That I, I can see like that shipping container that we looked at last week uh, being put next to this pier. And now I think it's all. I agree. Yeah. There's like, you know, you go from the beach to the shipping container, and then it's like the same elevation as the pier, so you can just walk from one mm. to another. Um, that could definitely change, like you know. If you don't have flyers how you move back and forth yeah. and stuff uh let's see i mentioned alpha strike strategies being a concern in testing less distance between the starting positions is a pretty substantial buff to those strategies this was something we kept in mind as we tested on smaller maps in practice however placing large sections of terrain during setup can make maps disadvantageous for alpha strikes additionally many alpha strikes teams rely on carrying large groups of characters or having lines of fire necessary for multiple uses of perplex or telekinesis. That's kind of what we were just talking about. Uh, should have just yeah. finished this first. Uh, by starting all characters single file along the edge of a map, this becomes difficult to achieve and slows their initial strike down. 
Yes, that is what we just... Uh, don't fret. Yep, is exactly what we did. <laughs> there are several other rules tweaks we'll discuss in upcoming articles that soften the more super fast, super aggressive play styles to keep them competitive without being dominating. Ultimately, the more dynamic setup these rules promote allow more kinds of teams to flourish than ever before. The design team approached the topic of maps with the serious goal of making Heroclix more interactive, fun, and dynamic. Heroclix, by its nature, is a competitive, tactical, and combat-oriented game. We want to elevate the excitement of gameplay and get and get right to the good stuff. Uh, we're excited to see how this refreshes metagames and allows an even greater depth of strategies. If you want to try playing on a 2x2 map but where you don't have one, we may have a surprise for you. The tile maps in the DC Comics Heroclix Batman Team-Up Miniatures game were designed with this update in mind. By removing the middle tiles, row I through P, they can be run as a 2x2 two two map. Both maps in that miniatures game will be modern legal in both their 2x3 two and 2x2 two two forms, though for official events you'll have to declare which arrangement you're using on your build sheet. Which, it's cool that they um, they knew this change was coming, and so they didn't you know, just give you like the old yeah. style, the oldie style map. <laughs> Uh, it's still the current style, but um, until the set drops. But this... yeah, they they let you uh, have this without like cluing anybody in. So that's very sneaky, yeah. very smart. So that uh... it's, a... <laughs> it's a real. So you thought you were gonna get a two by three map, but it was me, a two by two map all along. Yeah. Just, it was it was a real uh, pulled the shade over Jonathan's eyes there and surprised him there, Dio. Like wow, hiding amongst us, an imposter. Wow, who'd have thunk? Just this this was this is a real eye opener. I was like, wow, sneaky, sneaky whiz kids. Whoop. Like a magic trick. And I take away the middle tiles and voila. You know? Right. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Like, I dig it. I mean, also, I was like, if you have a whoa. two by three map, you can just fold it from square I to square P. Ooh. Um, ooh probably won't match go. up good, but <laughs> you can definitely yeah. just do that. It also won't be legal for any event. But, no, uh, not at all. But this bad boy is, which is cool. Yeah. That's the wild part. I was like, oh, and it's also a legal map when Beyond Amazing comes out. You know, like, it's neat. Yeah. I, I, I think that's just cool. I was just like, wow. All right. Dang, kids. I see you. I see. You. Like, that was just very creative. That was just well done. Yeah. And it, it makes the map tiles a little bit more interesting going forward. Obviously, I don't think they'll include six for a single map. Um, right. But the fact that you can rearrange them like this like i didn't even notice that like looking at this map i never even like contemplated like oh that would still fit together like was very sneaky but like uh, yeah i didn't even think like oh this would still fit together if i removed those i was just like yep i guess it's like a beach kind of makes sense i suppose with how the battle royale starting areas are at the map now that i look at it i guess it's like oh yeah you know i suppose if i owned this thing like if i would have had it in my hand before like this article being the first time I even like looked at this map and it's like, Oh yeah, maybe I can like, Oh weird. their battle Royale starting areas so far away. And it's like, Oh, I see now you just take out the middle two or something versus getting it shown. But yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. It shows that beyond amazing. wasn't it technically whatever the first set they are going to implement this in, but they knew about the change. They knew they were going to make the change and they were already starting to, mess with it as far back as you know at least a set before you know batman team up they were messing around with it and trying to get the the game somewhat more balanced you know i haven't went through all batman team up i don't know if they have necessarily uh less range or slower figures hugely but maybe there were like little things you know i don't know clicking through we got some fives and four ranges but there's still there's still some six ranges in there so i don't know yeah. but yeah there's still there's still it's like cool to see them. 10 speed um right stuff 10 like speed that. stuff are still still in there you know they, they still legacy the world's finest who's insane yeah. uh on a smaller map yikes yeah well, so yeah um uh, some like i i did a quick like hot list of characters that this new map is gonna so starting in square quote unquote square one and you have to get to square 16 out technically you only have to get to square 15 to uh, hit right. somebody that's in square 16 or target somebody in square 16. Um, but yeah, some characters that can do stuff like this is uh, the Hal Jordan Sinestro legacy. 
Oh, They've geez. got a 10 speed hypersonic with 10 range, giving them a <laughs> 15 square reach. And then with a perplex, that is a 16 square reach. So, yeah, that's a, a 12 for four. That's ridiculous. All on their lonesome. That is at the 175 point line. But uh, um, the Legacy Sentinel Mark II, which I don't know why you'd play this at 150 Ooh. points, but. Ooh, okay. 10 speed running shot. 10 range, 2 lightning bolts. That is an effective 15 square reach. Also, if uh, at the beginning of your turn you get to move 1 square, and it's also a 2 by 2 meaning that it's technically starting in square 2, not square 1, so it's got a full map reach all on its lonesome as well. Uh, here's one. This is a, the boogeyman of silver. Exodia the Forbidden One. <laughs> oh, God. Goodness gracious. Uh, what a real dark horse pick, Simeon. Yeah, colossal with 12 range, so... <laughs> There will only be a handful of like area of the map that uh, is protected from this guy or safe from this guy. Um, obviously, yeah, he can't move until he breaks all the bonds. But yeah, great silver pick. Or wait, no, he's oh, silver gosh. ring, not silver. Yeah, not dude, bad. he he is definitely golden <laughs> age. Like he, yeah, I don't think we'll have to worry too much about Exodia, the for forbidden one, <laughs> bothering you in Silver Age. Thank goodness. So that's nice. Uh, I guess Dark Side, straight up, right? Yeah. Eight range, eight speed. Eight Phase range, and teleport, speed. move it, make an attack. And he also has Perplex, just in case. So quite literally, this Dark Side, just full map reach now, casually by himself. Yeah, the, That's at least 250 points, though. The Phoenix Sentinel, I don't know about the lower lines, but it's top line. It has a 14 speed running shot with nine range, two lightning bolts. So that's a 16 square reach, but that's at 600 points. Um, lower down, it's either got hypersonic or less speed. But uh, also the uh, the three by six Galactus, the new Galactus we got. He's got a oh range yeah, and he's yep, just straight up. Yeah, just starting in square three. So oh yeah, yeah he is to square 14. <laughs> that is hilarious. I love that so much. Just yeah, he just shoots to square fourteen. So you know, move. No, move. Go ahead. No, move. Here's a no. Go ahead. Another <laughs> legacy one. Uh, the Hawkeye from Fantastic Forces, ten speed running shot, ten range, triple A, <laughs> fifteen squares with. Uh, yeah, he's got a uh, twelve for four with range combat expert. So, well, and that's before he starts doing his like bullseye tokens and stuff like that. So here's a figure I'm really going to like after the change, especially with the terrain markers. The legacy Captain America from Avengers Forever. He has eight range, two targets, and he's got 10 speed with running shots. So he's got a little 13 square reach. So it's not the full map, sure. But he does have the improved targeting, ignores hindering elevated in characters. So you combine this with a couple of uh, freight containers on the map of uh, terrain that you chose specifically. Give yourself some pretty decent cover, you know, a little something. There's a little something there. Yeah. I think the Prime Vision from Disney Plus, who has the, it's only a 12 speed phasing that he can flurry afterwards, but it could be perplexed up to a 15 to get him, you know, anywhere within attacking range of the map. So he might see more play. I don't know. I think Arachnite is also just solid because he's just got really good reach already. You know, so Rack Knight's cool. Reed Richards, fixer of the universe. This is like a give and take because he has to occupy the starting area to make his Molecule Man bystander. So the starting area being so much thinner is really rough for Reed. But uh, he's got but yeah, what, ten speed leap climb. He's got an eleven speed leap climb, so he can't. Leap climb. So I it, mean, uh, he can't TK, do it on his own. But yeah, TK yeah, and he can get him there. There. TK movement, and it's a little, little plus zero free. Bam! Molecule man. So, like, that's kind of neat. Gets over there in two actions. Pretty cool. Wrecker, of course, obviously. Things like Wrecker, things like Cape Pride, those mission points that are based on starting areas or being closer to the opponent's side of the map than your own is really good. I was Ironically, that, uh, that rare Cape Pride. Um, that one will be a little bit harder now because, I mean, not much you have harder. less but, actual yeah. starting area. Friendly yeah. characters with the Marauders keyword have free. If this effect has not been used this turn and this character occupies an oppo opposing player's starting area, generate a stranded mutant bystander. Uh, but the stranded mutant doesn't have to travel as far as they used to. So Oh, true. Yeah. 
Um, I think Lockjaw obviously is like a oh 14, geez yeah fourteen instantly. square phasing with passenger four or passenger one or passenger four usually passenger four on animal yeah it is something where it's like you need some side steps to get everybody that you want to carry or you're just not carrying as many people anymore you know right because um, even though Lockjaw is a peanut base yeah. he's still only going to be adjacent to two people on in the starting area which yeah. is wild um. Here's one of my favorite ones, Calder. Okay. I, I think that, without saying, I think this specific set got the biggest boost by this change, like, set-wide, than any other set. Okay. So my favorite Dark Horse pick, for Silver at least, is number 106, Shawn Michaels. Oh, yeah. baby! Yeah, he's got You're the You're so that right, really though, Simeon. Grand entrance, so 10 right. squares, nimble sidestep <laughs> yeah. to square... What is that? Oh. 14, 13, something like that? <laughs> yeah. And that's just, a, that's all free action. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't even do baby. Uh, Dude, W, okay, you know what? I love this change now. You're right. Just the, the buff it gave WWE. Yeah, absolutely. Let's oh, do it. Yeah. My, uh, my Eddie Guerrero yeah, I love this. and my Eddie Shaggy Asuka team, <laughs> where I'm going to have Eddie <laughs> using the triple Amigo or the three Amigos. I'm going to have Shaggy. <laughs> Uh, doing his version of the triple i don't know right oh yeah totally he will be snack. yeah uh chase shaggy yeah so like because i mean oscar on her own bottom dial move out nine squares and then yeah uh, five speed yeah. charge that's 14 squares with one action like wwe is basically oh. full map charge now like oh, almost the dude. entire set which i love this <sighs> Uh, what's which uh the vehicular assault Stone Cold? Oh, Stone Cold, he gets charged. Yeah, for uh, in his like straight line. Yes, that's which is literally uh, a sixteen square reach turn one. Literally, exactly. Yeah. Oh my. Yes, Stone Cold. Yes. With improved movement characters, hindering. Tra oh man, Elevated is gonna. I forget Elevated didn't exist for these guys. Yeah. So <laughs> you're gonna need to need to get rid of it somehow. Dude, Either I I WWE love this. The, uh, I think honestly, I Yo, think yeah, one of the WWE biggest. Benefits of having your own terrain that you can place down is that shipping container we saw that has all of the transition squares. Oh yeah, so that's true. If there's if there's like an elevation one that goes to elevation two, and you just put that like next to it where there aren't any transition squares, Ooh, you just yeah. Can go. I th I think that's how it would work. I'm pretty sure. I mean, we haven't seen all. The I would rules, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> WWE is like smoking across the honestly map. just because of the insane buff it gives WWE I'm I'm now 1000% I'm a-okay with this Macho Man Randy Savage is going to be able to flying elbow and he flexes up his speed and move another three square yeah it's going to be insane uh all right I'm totally cool with map change now you you got it you convinced me WWE is insane on these maps and therefore I love it this is great I know what I'm playing in every Silver Age tournament forever now because this this just kicks so much butt. This is so awesome. Uh, it's so funny when I God, when I was dude. first going like across. I was like, "Who's somebody that's like unconventionally fast?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, good old Shawn Michaels." Like all the wrestlers, his signature move is half speed, um, half of his speed value make then make a close attack. So like he gets to do that. Plus his yeah. essentially three free squares. He gets to move with that speed power. Um, so yeah, he. Prior to this, he could go like eight squares to make his like signature move, mm, um, which is already good. Yeah, there's no way to like pull off his signature move turn one, but you can definitely get like anywhere on the map with him turn one, pretty much. Oh my gosh, yeah, grand dude, entrance. I love. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, grand entrance is now just overpowered. I love it. And you know they're not going to change anything. They're not going to silver or rat a grand entrance to be no. like half speed or anything. Nah. WV is going to be a menace in Silver Age. I well, love it. That's the... Uh, what's... Oh, man. The uh, Convention John Cena. That's oh, yeah? Like the, the real silver meta is going to be <laughs> Convention John Cena moving like alpha striking. Can't be hit. Yeah. Can't see me. Yeah, he's got 10 speed charge. Equipping so he's some, got a 15 uh, square reach or something. I don't know. He's got perplex. Yeah. You you have a bunch of convention John Cena's and bada bing bada boom. And bam. Can't see me. Cross the map attitude adjustment. Heck yeah. That's awesome, dude. It's hilarious. 
I couldn't imagine being a WWE hater. I couldn't imagine listening to this <laughs> podcast right now and be like, oh, gross. Now uh, WWE is better. I'm like, bro, I it. sound like such a loser. Like, imagine being a WWE <laughs> hater and just being that much of a loser. I, I couldn't. I couldn't possibly imagine it because it's hilarious. That's aw- Come on, listener. That's hila- That's awesome. That is funny. This is way cooler than like, now Unimind can attack you anywhere. Like, that's lame. That is lame and for losers. This, yeah, WWE, needs, this is cool. Range. Who needs who a needs range, range bro? When, when you just grand entrance halfway across Dude. the map? Or actually, like, I, I don't think there's a single WWE character that doesn't get past the halfway point with grand entrance. Oh, at least, right? They all have eight speed on the low. Seven is the lowest. Like, Finn Balor's got like seven. I think, yeah. He's, yeah, he's like the slowest guy. Everybody else, I think, at least has at least seven. So, yeah. Oh, baby. This is so good. Oh, no. Big Show on lower is six speed. Big Show's slow as heck. Ooh, I know. Uh, Andre Rain's on lower is also six slow. speed. Yeah. No, Andre is slow. Andre, yeah. I don't, they never they never drop below six on the half dial. That's what I'm seeing. They never have like five. So, dang, Trish Stratus, the half dial, has still got nine speed with nimble. Trish is fast as frick. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Nine speed nimble on her half line, and I'm looking at all these other half lines that are like seven, you know, seven lightning speed or something, and I'm just like, oh, dang, nine speed nimble. That's, dang, Trish, all right, we see you. We see you. Ric Flair's a seven speed nothing on his half line. Ric Flair's an old man. He's a little slow. Uh, okay, but yeah, thing. they at least... They got great, great range, though. This is hilarious. I love this so much. This is awesome. In silver or, I mean, obviously, um, in modern, like the Flash, like the Flash can <laughs> Oh, yeah, Flash nuts, is so, nuts. But Flash is insane on this. Also, like with the TK Flash, um, since we're assuming, like, you know, the minimum oh, sure. four squares, I'm assuming they're going to probably shorten TK to four just because it, you know, they're trying to balance out alpha strikes. Um but Flash has a thing where it's when the Flash uses it to place a friendly character after resolutions, you may place that character within two squares in line of fire of their current square. Similar to like Mr. Oz in like silver. Playing Mr. Oz will be like imagine if they change it Again. to like four square TK six, right? and you play yeah. Mr. Oz where he lets you place that person that just got placed like two squares away. Their TK is now only two squares. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's so crippling. Yeah, Mr. Oz is going to be mean. Mean in Silver Age. Yeah. It's rude. If you play but Mr. That's, Oz, that's another bad man. Uh, prob control with a range value of 12. Oh. Yeah, oh gosh. Yeah. He used to see, like, basically the whole map, and now he just does. Oh, I mean, Felix Faust is going to be a menace, too. Yeah. But that is going to actually suck. Murder Felix Faust right away every game, because... <laughs> Eight squares. He can be a little, his little free pop around. He'll probably always be able to be within his freaking insane range. Yeah, I hate that. Not a fan. No. Yeah, the little thirty. But point I, I would looks. assume now, like with this change, this has to like Wonder Woman has to rotate Flash and Felix Faust and all this stuff. There's no way this yeah. carries on for another year in modern. That's wild. They I might, Nick. Yeah, they might. They might even get rid of Rise and Fall. Could see, I could see maybe rotate Wonder Woman, maybe even rotate Rise and Fall, but keep Empire. I could see that. But uh, yeah, Wonder Woman would be an insane set to keep Modern Age after this change. Oof, I mean, that'd be got, insane. Wonder Woman's got a ton of a ton of mobility pieces, and not just oh, like, huge. You know, like obviously there's Sky Tyrant, there's Flash. Oh yeah, Sky um, Tyrant. Yep. But there's also like just high high speed values uh i don't think scarab is like as crazy as he once could have been but like commissioner a little scary. A rookie like rookie yeah. has a 10 speed rookie. uh seven range with running shots so that's that's 12 squares on his own and he's being placed at least one square ahead Oof. of commissioner so yep. wild yeah so rookies a bigger menace now of all things heck Future Foundation, Radioactive Clay, a few other, some other garbage going on there. Yeah, it's also the pretty, range. pretty scary. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Man, wild, 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 wild. Yeah, rotation. It better be a harsh, better be a harsh rotation this uh, this coming year because, man, some of this stuff is 
not going to be awesome, not going to be terribly fun. Not that modern age is necessarily meant to be fun, but, uh, you know, uh, 300 modern age and all that jazz is going to be kind of freaking wild. Yikes, man. Holy frick. Yikes. Yeah. Some of this stuff is going to be insane, but it's cool. So yeah, man, the map change is huge. It's, it's again, I keep saying it's huge. It's small. It's very small. It's shrinking the map size. And because of it, it's going to have an insane impact. I know we've already heard people on both sides of it. I myself am going to be, you know, let's wait, let's play through some of it. I mean, I'm already kind of sold on the fact that I get a, you know, WWE is going to be really fun. In Silver Age, you can always play your own maps. If you play at home, and that's the majority of, like, what you play in, or you don't play, like, 300 modern competitive, you have no reason to really complain. Not, not that I'm saying your voice doesn't matter, but what I'm saying is, like, if you just play at home, then just do play on whatever map you want. You know, yeah. if you want to have a small map night and a big map night, feel free to do that. If you only ever want to go use the normal maps, if you want to use the three by three maps from infinity challenge, go for it. That's what we played on a few times and we were just hanging out we had a fun time. So, and yeah, from what we've seen with, if they knew about this change before designing uh, Batman team up from what we see in like that set, the stats and like values of speed and range didn't drop that much. It wasn't like, you know, I wasn't like baffled. Like, why is you know the penguin has eight speed with running shot? He only has four range, but like the penguin, right. eight speed. Like you've seen the guy, right? I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's as fast as Catwoman, who also has eight speed. Uh, mm. But yeah, you know, I'd like, say she's a little more nimble than he is. Yeah, uh, I don't think that they, if they already implemented it in Batman Team Up, which uh, we know that they did to a certain extent with that map, right? Um, I don't think it's going to be a big enough change where if you play on like the larger map, these characters will be like underpowered or whatever. Uh, if they are, then just keep playing with uh, Infinity from AI. Oh gosh, she'll give you a plus one to both of those things. Yeah. So I'm mostly curious to see what kind of maps we get in the future, how they're going to look with like the decluttering of terrain. Because even this map, it's got one big side of of elevated some blocking but there's there's a lot of openness to this map as well the the batman uh coney island beach map or whatever it is so yeah i'm curious to see how else it's going to change really the biggest thing please make the maps in the starter starter kits be like the monopoly fold out like they're all connected versus all be the four individual pieces yeah especially if it's people probably like a four tile like yeah, exactly yeah things. it's gonna be like four tiles we yeah. have the technology you know we can do it board games have done it for years i believe in us whiz kids please it'd be so awesome that i can just fold it out like a monopoly board since it's kind of going to be roughly the size of it anyways that would be awesome versus just the three loose tiles yeah Especially that i've got to remember if, how to connect yeah if you can't like rearrange them or interlock them however which way you want then i feel like it's necessary that there's like because i might also slide the map four different ways there's four different ways i might just want to spin you know get it folded out be like here's the map what side do you want we can just spin it you know yeah. without without having to totally rearrange all my little squares we just spin the map ah boom there you go bro how do you feel i don't i don't think we talked much about like initiative change about second player choosing map i think that helps both with the map change and also with the the problem people have seen to be had with competitive or whatever where it's like oh if you go first then your odds of like w just winning the game are that much higher because you go first you get to choose map yeah like those are just two massive things like, already so now it's like okay well if you like want to go there first there's a time where uh winning map role was way more important in winning like when it came to winning game you know obviously this was this was around the time where people were running like 13 plus monster theme like where right. if that team yeah. like lost map, they had a real hard time overcoming like whatever their opponent yeah. had. But if they won map, you know, they weren't guaranteed to win, but like they definitely had an easier time of winning if they won map, which is why people were putting so many cheap pieces on like, you know, the theme to just to get the theme bonus or like the bonus to roll. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we're still in that era, but I do like this change regardless because it's been like a long time where it's just like second player needs something like you need to get something for not winning the map roll. Um, so you still want to win the map roll, 
because you get the choice, which first of all, that's pretty powerful being able to be first or second. Um, then you like, so if you win the map roll, you still get to potentially choose the map. You just don't get to also go first and you just also don't get to pick which edge. Um, but yeah, like either way, like if I win and I want to want to give you the option of map and then I get to pick which edge cause I want to go first. I've got like an alpha strike, you know, first player yeah. still has that like ability, but, uh, yeah. I, I like the change. I think it's a step in the right direction when it comes to helping even the playing field of uh, the, the whole first, second kind of thing. I think so. It's it's neat. It's going to be it's going to be tough to get used to because I'll be like, all right, well, I won, and then start reach for a map, and I'll be like, ah, 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 no, 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 I don't think so. You you may have won the role. I got to choose the map, bro. Uh, but then you get to choose side, which is cool. It's just you know, it's neat. It's going to be. A bit of a whatever, a growing pain to get used to that part, and then also the big map change or the small map change. I should keep saying, but yeah, I think the biggest thing, because like kind of like how we were with the Wonder Woman rules, we were like, "Wow, that's a wild change. We're making a lot of wild changes. This is kind of crazy." And this change is friggin' wild. It's insane. Um, but after a while, you know, we've been playing with Wonder Woman for about two years now. And I'm like, I'm cool. like the way to play the, play the game. It is. It does. It it was faster. You know, they were right. They were like, hey, get rid of pushing damage. The game will be faster. And I was like, you know what? Dang. They spit in facts. The game was faster. You know, I play faster games because of it. Games flow easier. Obviously, the map is smaller. My place, me and my play style is very similar. We already play faster than normal people. And then also, it's usually just uh let's just get in the middle and let's just beat some head in, you know, let's just start the fisticuffs, the big right. brawl. So that's just that's what this map does. This map size just makes it boom, go for it. I don't want to lose the fun part of maps where it's like, oh, but you know, it's, terrain should still matter. So I think this will also help give a focus on their special terrain markers that you're gonna be placing at the beginning of the game because okay, less clutter on the map by itself right it's like oh okay so we start off like vanilla ice cream and then i we each get three toppings to put on the map for a weird analogy this would get (laughs) this would light me up light me up on hc realms comment section they'd be like oh we're going with ice cream analogy well really it's like you know i mean i know you have a problem with food analogies on there as well uh 300 hot dogs and and whatnot (laughs) so (laughs) the difference is yeah if this was ice cream i would actually enjoy it (laughs) Where yeah, yikes. Yeah, <laughs> jeez. But that's basically that's basically what it is. We we now get to uh <laughs> as opponents, we get to come together and design a map kind of, which is cool. So and that also I think is gonna give insane playability. So people were always complaining about oh, I want more maps, I want more maps, they should just make a map pack. Well now, okay, one map is played four different ways. And then really an infinite number of ways because of terrain. That doesn't mean make less maps, Whiskets. Please, by all means, make keep making uh, more maps and make as many maps as possible. Well, Especially like know. Avengers 60th. Oh, now yeah. we know Avengers, Avengers 60th. 60th. Yeah, we're going to get got a ton of maps. Play at home kits. Yeah. Yeah, which is great because I want more maps, especially with this size, to be in rotation. That's going to be huge. Really, that's the I keep saying huge, but it's going to be important to have a bunch of these maps in rotation as soon as we can get them because they're going to be a part of the game and it's it's going to be really weird and metas will be defined by it's like, well, here's the one two by two map, you know, <laughs> then like there's that's what I build my team for because there's there's one of these in existence right now that's legal. There so hopefully we get a bunch of these for like for two years um, until like the only size is the new size like two years after well roughly two years after spider-man drops uh, it won't quite work out that way but it'll be something like that it'll be kind of like a wild time where you have to have a team that can work both on a smaller map and on like you know can be able to adapt you can't have a team that excels really well on like the new size but can't function properly on like the old size uh you'll need to be able to oh, do exactly that, yeah which is it is going to be a wild time for competitive. Like I don't envy the people that are big competitive players because that's going to be nope. You know, I guess you like barrier tech will still just work the same as it always has. You'll have to have like an extra line of defense for it now that super strength can pick it up, but otherwise it'll just keep working how it did. So I don't know. It's let's see where it keeps going from here. 
let's see what's the next article about i think pac powers and changes to the comprehensive rules so that's going to be huge seeing all of those seeing what powers will interact with the terrain markers now seeing all the ones that become minimum range for so yeah it's it's a massive change it's huge but i think just you know we might make a video here playing on uh playing on some of the smaller maps to kind of get people into the swing of things. It's interesting. It really is it's super interesting. Yeah. So like their initial up, or their initial release said that third update will be updated powers and abilities. Okay. And so update this four will be the comprehensive rules and miscellaneous okay. changes. So yeah. I think PAC is next. Um, and then comprehensive rules is going to be the last thing, which hopefully they did say that they, they're going to be dropping both of those prior to the set release. Uh, hopefully they just drop it like whenever they drop that article, but maybe... Yeah, soon. <laughs> maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just wait a little bit longer. Who knows? We don't, we don't know when Spider-Man's coming out, right? Like, Not like probably guaranteed. another month or two, yeah, something like that. I About three the... months between sets, two-ish months between sets. Let me see if there's a solicit. Um I want to say the original solicit was like late February when like people were first. Ooh, okay. Let's that seems a little see. soon now. So maybe it does. Maybe it'll be later on. Maybe it'll be a March. I could be down for a March release. Early, early March. Maybe, maybe like a pre-release in February, and then a March release for Beyond Amazing. I don't remember. Uh, so yeah, Beyond we'll have to see. Uh, let's see. Expected release date is March 31st, 2023. Oh, wow. Okay. So a late March release. Yeah. Right on. So. Okay. So that kind of gives us an idea of when when this is all going to change. Yeah. And they'd still have plenty ah, of interesting. time. Like at this point, uh, shortest month out of the year, but they'd have still a month to... Oh, no. Yeah. Because it'd be all of February, all of March. So two months <laughs> to uh, yeah. completely finalize whatever changes need to be made it if, already if they're not done already yeah who knows well the comprehensive rule book is like a thing that lives online so that's i assume relatively easy to change and update and whatever else i will say that was another big thing was we were trying to figure out if just about the comprehensive rule book if a chief makes deathstroke doom patrol when deathstroke chooses teen titans or justice league to gain his keywords can he give them Doom Patrol? And the answer is yes, because it's both effects happen when establishing theme teams. But then looking at both parts of the comprehensive rule book, when it says in the first player, like actual the time you would establish a theme team, right? Where for first player, second player, for game setup, it says determining theme teams. And it's like after establishing first player, you determine whether or not you have a theme team. And then in the theme team part of it, it says when establishing first player and as per the whatever rules of operations for when you're supposed to do this, 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 and that, it says establish your theme team. So in two different sections of the rule book, when talking about the exact same thing, going first, right? In the going first section, in the start of the game, it says determine first player. But then in the theme team section, it says establish theme team, which is really funny because that's how... Uh, Arako and X-Men is worded. They are both, like Apocalypse and Genesis, they're both determine a theme team, but mm. Niles Calder, the Chief, and Deathstroke are both establishing a theme team. Uh, I asked uh, Judge Anthony, and he was just like, yeah, we, we worked through it. And we're like, well, I guess they're technically the same thing, establishing and determining. So they would happen at the same time, if you, for some reason, had both of those effects on your on your force. So that's wild. That I feel like that needs to be cleaned up where we need to choose either determine yeah. or establish See, to and me, choose like, one of those like, words. If I was going to go with just um, vernacular, like not game mechanic wise, when establishing a theme team, it would be like when building your team. And then when determining a theme team would be you already have the team and you're checking to see. That's like, when it, yeah, yeah, it's built. Yeah. But that's. I would agree with that too. But again, that's just one random interaction that we just happened to notice this past week for not being consistent and just using like the same words. So I imagine there's probably other parts of the rule book that may or may not need a little update like that too, where it's just like, oh, these are, we're talking about in two different sections of the rule book, the same thing at the beginning of the game, right? Establish or determine a theme team. We should use the exact same word because Hero Clicks, if anything, 
the word can't and the word may and the word use is different than the word may, you know, so like things like that do need to be figured out the wording and of whatnot. So getting all on the same page, hopefully, hopefully more than just a here's the terrain comprehensive rules and here's the yeah. new map comprehensive rules. Hopefully there is like an overhaul to the entire comprehensive rule book to just make it all flow better. I don't know. Yeah, I don't envy you whoever, whoever like would that. have to do that, but but yeah, no, it sounds I like a headache. Like, <laughs> Sorry, bro. As, <laughs> sounds sounds like fun. As much like, as I hated it when I was learning the game, uh, like especially when game like relearning it in 2017, even um, you know, capital close versus lowercase close, uh, power oh, yeah. action, like you know, like all those kind of like terms. As much as I hated it, once you like figure it out, once like the game terms all fit. And especially looking at the last couple sets, if you go too far back, and by too far back, I mean, let's see, like, geez, 2017, I guess? Yeah. yeah how if far you go, back if you go going? back to okay. like 2017, 2018, they were still yeah. using uh, some mismatched verbiage that like they don't use anymore. They're still working like the kinks out. Uh, so like now, if somebody can carry multiple people, it says all like, not all caps, but it says uh, passenger four or passenger one or like whatever. Oh, yeah. Whereas it used to say, uh, it used to say something like, uh, this character may carry up to four friendly characters regardless of their, you know, whatever, something like that. It used to say weird stuff like that, which was just really long and tiresome. Now it's like a lot easier, a lot uh, more right. succinct. But yeah, there are still a few things where we have these effects that get put in pretty much every set so hopefully we can word them all going forward the same way it'd be a neat idea that's for sure <laughs> it would be nice so yeah we'll have to see we'll just have to see what happens with the comprehensive rule book changes and what not but all right is there anything else we want to say about the uh the map change or do we want to move on um no i don't i just uh i think i i hope that they legalize some of the old br maps to be like 1v1 maps too Ooh. i think it'd be wild. Some, uh like all the x of swords stuff yeah it'd be cool i mean i like well. that they weren't designed for that may line, as well but yeah yeah i could i doubt this will be the last time we even talk about this subject i'm sure we'll talk about it on like every podcast until it happens and then while it's happening we'll talk about it even more so but yeah listener let us know what you think about this map change this little big map change that's happening and yeah, just let us know. Feel free to write into the show. This is where I'll now plug our social medias. But if you want to message us at facebook.com slash dial H for hero clicks, it's all spelled out, dial H for hero clicks. Or if you want to maybe shoot us a message on Twitter or tweet at us using at dial H, just the number four, dial H for hero clicks on twitter.com. Or if you want to send us an email, we still get those from time to time, dial H for hero click, all spelled out at gmail.com feel free to write in tell us what you think about the map changes tell us if you've messed around with the batman team up map now that, that we know is that a official small map that you can use or maybe taking any other battle royale map and actually saying this you did you play in the event at world simian i think you did in 2019 where it was the battle royale map it was like 300 modern but it was in a br map right uh, did you play in that no no you didn't okay no, I, I know, know that was about, pretty though. that was pretty fun. And once again, this goes back to my theory that WizKids for every change they make, they either have a special power or they do something like that prior to making the change. You know what I mean? Where for a yeah. while they would make close combat expert, but as close, you yeah, know, instead of as a power doesn't action. Doesn't deal feedback damage. Yeah, no feedback exactly. So this this once again adds grounds. What were you doing in that side event? You thought you were playing in a fun little side event where you could play a 300 modern team on a small map. You were a lab rat. That's what you were. You were a testing dummy. You fool. All of you, you idiot. You silly. And I fell for it too. I'm one of them. <laughs> I, and I lost to Michael. <laughs> I remember uh, playing Gardner. Watching people. Oh, gosh. Because that was back when uh, Korath Hulk was still legal. Yeah, that's what I was playing, bro. It yeah. was awesome. It was so great. Oh, that's right. I gave you like a Wesley Crusher or something to borrow. From yeah, you event. like loaned me a little some bits. Yep. Yeah, dude, my Hulk had Battle Fury and Precision Strike, and it just 
its own move action could get across because also giant reach three thank you lost part of the avengers babe uh and the hulk was just boom roll dice boom roll die the first guy I did that too he was like oh are you serious and i was like yeah this is this is what's uh gonna happen so yeah what a fun what a wild time that's a that's another silver age thing that you can do which is fun so yeah, guys, that's all our socials. Let us know how you feel about the new maps or just ask us any kind of listener questions. Before we get to our listener questions, I forgot that this came out this week and was scrolling on Dial H, but we saw the box start for Captive Hearts Wolverine oh, yeah. and for Snap Thanos. Simeon, how do you feel this? the picture of Scott and Jean Grey is the flap yeah. on the inside of the flap? That's so perfect. It's so good. That's uh, I love that for box art, and then the the background of it is his like room. It's yeah. like the room. <laughs> so I'll need two <laughs> that he's in. One that uh, stays in its box forever, and one that I can actually play with. Yeah, this is wild. We're finally getting hero clicks that have cool boxes where you're like an action figure collector. Like, a, oh well, that's gonna stay in its box. It's so cool. The the Thanos snap, cool in its own right. Not as cool as the Captive Arts Wolverine, where it's literally. The picture of Scott and Gene. That is so funny. It's just a sour face. It's just Yeah. <laughs> Wait, they said they were gonna bring us more dynamic sculpts. And if this isn't the most dynamic sculpt that is ever existed. This might be the most unique Wolverine sculpt we've gotten in oh, HeroClix ever made. If we say ninety percent of Wolverine is like him kinda crouched or totally crouched with his yeah, claws, claws popped. popped, yeah. And just yeah. This Wolverine on the on the bed. <laughs> it's so, it's so funny oh it's gold and that box the box art just sells it so much it's so good oh my goodness thanos snap thanos snap's got some got some cool snap things from the comics where it's like him leading up to the to do the snap and then it shows it all whited out which it's cool i like the little thanos snap with the effect that is the same font as the the snap effect in his sculpts that's really cool so we're getting the the iconics line is is more flushed out. Seeing these bad boys, I don't think they are for pre order though on WizKids' website. I think we just saw them, right? I don't think they're. Yeah, I don't know if. I don't think you can buy them right now. Let me double. Let me double check. Let me go to the store. But I think we just saw them. But man, they're cool. I wish they were able to pre order these instead of just the the pointing Spider Man to get all those holiday, um, uh, cool figures. You know, they are listed. But not even like in stock. Like they're, I mean, obviously not in stock. Oh, okay. not even like as far as like a thing that you can order. Yeah, it's just darn. They like placeholders up. Yeah. So so far we have seen the double point Spidey. The I mean we've seen a lot of them, but like this box art at least we've seen um, meme Spidey, Bed Wolverine, and Thanos snapping. Right. I do love that they love came back so with funny. the uh, onomatopoeia like little effects yeah i love that yeah his yeah, box is his box is okay it's got like the the comic panel that's obviously like iconic and then just like space stars yep. and stuff that's that's thanos for you i guess also shout out to the whiz kids store you are you can get our our namesake right now you can get robbie reed and the h dial with a purchase right now until the 31st which is very i guess yikes january is over <laughs> basically hear that by the time <laughs> you might yep uh, <laughs> hopefully like last day, yeah with any dc purchase so if you haven't bought any batman yet boom you can get robbie reed in the h dial on the store all right moving on to some listener questions there are dozens of us dozens we got a few on the discord we didn't shout this out before but the discord is a patreon exclusive discord as well as no, that's it. That's the only thing it's exclusive to is our Patreon. Patreon, uh, you can donate as lo- little as you want, but five dollars get you access not only to Discord, but it'll get you access to behind the scenes videos, blooper reel videos, as well as blooper episodes slash little goofs and gaffums from the podcast. All that cool stuff. It'll get you added into the Discord. Which, besides all of that, you also get to play Bad Samaritan or maybe even some Marvel Snap tournaments or maybe even uh, normal Hero Hooks tournaments. I don't know. We're going to do all sorts of stuff this year. It's going to be really cool. Uh, as well as, again, joining the Patreon. If you join at a higher tier, well, actually, any tier will get you entered into our monthly giveaway where you can win some cool Hero Hooks. I know this month alone, I'll be giving away two 
prime she hulks uh prime winter hulks because i keep freaking pulling them and i don't i don't want them uh so i'll be giving away some of those i'll be giving away uh chase uh dr doom with out the time platform and also without a card because that's how it was sent to me and i that's a whole nother story that we're not going to worry about but that also that's out there uh all my extra rares from avengers forever are going to be gone all my extra like legacy cards we're totally culling avengers forever this this giveaway for this month so a ton of stuff is going to be given away as well as some legacy stuff so it'll be fun so join the patreon to get access to those giveaways you can also get access to our cool action tokens we have some just howdy howdy let's get rowdy action tokens as well as we like to make custom bystanders that are really funny like the aim renegade but it's the car renegade or the aim agent that is simeon with a bucket on his head because that's basically what aim agents are you know it's really funny so we have Kind of cool bystanders. I like the uh, the Simeon Namor, the Calder Captain America, and the Ian Blazing Skull for Rick Jones. Those are hilarious Blazing bystanders. Skull, yeah. Um, yeah, emphasis on Blazing Skull for Ian. Uh, so yeah, like we have some really funny bystanders you can also get by joining the Patreon. There's all sorts of cool stuff. So go ahead, check out the Patreon, and it also gives you access to our Discord. Again, you can already answer or ask us questions anywhere you know, that I said before on social medias, but this is more of a, an easier direct route. So new year, new dog asks, what are the odds we'll see a Dr. Demonicus legacy card in Avengers 60th? Also, which figures would you like to see from Avengers assemble and Nick Fury's agents of shield get legacy carded? I think Dr. Demonicus is probably pretty low. I think if this is a, a shield set, he might be higher. I don't think he's so much an Avengers dude. I don't, I've never read a comic I, with Dr. Demonicus. Yeah, I've he's never cool, seen but... him outside of Heroclix. But I, I do love the figure, and I do hope that he gets a legacy card at some point. Yeah. Uh, but for Avengers Assemble and Nick Fury Age of Shield, I know, obviously biased, but I'd like to see that Falcon. The Falcon Captain America maybe getting a legacy he already got re that exact sculpt already got remade for the captain america set rare falcon cap so maybe not same thing with that captain america from nick fury his sculpt was reused for old man cap so i don't think any of the the captain america's what i so much want a legacy card i think the biggest legacy we might get from a uh, age of or Dang, I was thinking of Age of Ultron, not Avengers Assemble. I was going to say that Black Panther, but we're not counting that set. So Avengers Assemble, that Thor was really cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I really liked all the chases. If we can round out that entire chase theme as terrible as that would probably be and people would hate it, yeah. but that King that King Thor would be cool. We already would, got Rick Jones. I would we already got one and done. King Thor to... <laughs> that King Thor would be so awesome. Like, I don't even want his like dial to change or yeah obviously not his dial but uh i don't even want his like powers to change i just want his point cost to be like cut yeah off. i don't make know. him lower it's hard to cut 369 directly in half but you know they can do some maths yeah you figure it out round down uh but no i that king thor is one of my favorites he just always bad same with that hulk that hulk was great yeah he just outshined so heavily by the uh mcu uh oh movie hulk yeah, yeah at the time yep um yeah that black widow was really cool if she was 100 points i'd probably play it especially yeah. like even if she just did the same thing i remember being just trounced by a team that was just her at 200 and then martian manhunter from justice league trinity oh, really? war at 200 oh. and so they're both in stealth the whole time they're both like running and gunning the whole time very rough okay i would like the namor the dive namor with the big sploosh effect oh, the big splash from, uh, effect fury yeah in a nick fury super rare, yeah 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 so they they made a lot of the invaders i i don't think we would need much of them but i, I would like this namor specifically to get a legacy he'd be really cool yeah I'd be down for that i'd take that i mean this wouldn't make sense for this set or for really any set coming avengers out, yeah but, uh the the Jessica Drew Spider Woman, that's a good sculpt, and we don't oh, sure it very often. You could throw that in Avengers set. She's yeah, she got the Avengers keyword. You could probably toss her in there. Yeah, something like on reveal, all opposing characters get like a minus one to attack for the next turn, something like that. Yeah, yeah, Simeon. Something like that. Some on reveal <laughs> effect. <laughs> Gosh. Is that not a game term in Hero Clicks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very funny. Get a little of this, get a little of this goof. A little of this guy. Ooh, uh, Red Wolf and Lobo. Oh I, yeah. I, that would be such an awesome figure to get a legacy. Oh. That one should 
honestly, like anything that's ever had a uh, little pop off stuff at this point, I'm collecting yeah. because yeah. Um, I think they should all get remade. But no, that Red Wolf Lobo, that was like my go to piece for a long time out of that set. Yeah, he, was, he was so awesome. You could charge Flurry and then drop Lobo and get like a third attack with that. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude. Ah, oh, that was an, such an awesome piece. Uh, Sandman. I don't oh, know. I would maybe, say like maybe. a Mortis, but we just got Ooh. a new one Mortis with that exact outfit. Oh, you're right. So we did. We were a little Kang heavy yeah, I, in the last set. I, I don't know if we get any more Kangs, especially himself already getting one legacy card. Nothing crazy, but he already got a legacy card, so. I don't know if we get too many more Kangs. Oh, D-Man. I would laugh so hard if we got a D-Man legacy. We don't need a Justin Safer legacy. Please yeah. don't do that. Master Pandemonium was fun. He was weird. He was, he was very so wonky weird. the way he worked. But Didn't he have... Yeah, look at his, his little long demonic little arms thing. that uh, yeah. had mystics. So if you killed him... That was back when <sighs> mystics before the change, so you took the unavoidable. Ooh. Ooh, there's like some other Ellie figure that like... The only character they ever made, you would like have to divide, like for like the first time ever in Hero Clicks, you actually had to like use division or something. I can't remember which <laughs> one was it. Uh, there's someone. It's like it's not Master Pandemonium, but I always think it's him because he just has a humongous brick of text yeah. for his like arms for whatever reason. But it's like an Ellie from Age of Ultron, where it's like. You then divide something, and it's like, what game are we playing? How much math is happening right now? Is it Graviton? Uh, no, it's not. All right, whatever. I don't know. I can't think of it. There, there was like some dude in like Avengers Assemble or Age of Ultron that I was like, what are we doing right now? But okay, the, those are some some cool legacy call outs for Avengers Assemble and Nick Fury, Agents of Shield. Kling Sauce asks. Bacon burrito or sausage burrito? It's definitely bacon. sausage. Whoa! <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I oh, don't. Okay. I'm okay. If I'm making bacon, if bacon is its own dish, like it's its own like side of the plate, its own its own thing, I'm fine with it. Okay. Bacon loses too much flavor when it's like mixed in with stuff for me. And bacon there's... shouldn't be like the main meat. Bacon's no. a great side meat source. Yeah, there's a reason why I give people me. so much grief about BLTs. I'm like, that, right. those are just toppings for an actual sandwich. Right. You it's need a burger for that yeah. to be a real, a real sand or something, some ham, something in there. Just, yeah. just, just bacon, lettuce, and tomato. That's how are you full? How is that? How is that a meal to anyone? Yeah, unless it's uh, bacon burrito or cut. sausage burrito, and uh, why not both? Yeah. Really. Why not put both bacon and sausage in a burrito and some ham? We'll just load that load that sucker up. I just had an omelet that was an all meat omelet, all cheese, all meat omelet. It was great. It was no bacon, egg. sausage, chunks of ham. Well there was egg. <laughs> <laughs> there was egg. By definition yeah. of it being an omelet, there had to be egg. Egg, oh, egg was present. <laughs> I, I realized I did say an all meat. All meat, all cheese. No, I made it. Like, well, I just that, uh, that leaves one ingredient out. What like I blended up some ham. Till it was a liquid, <laughs> put it in a pan, Ugh. mixed it yeah. with some, some bacon, some beef, some sausage, flipped it. Yeah, all meat omelet. So nasty. That's so disgusting. You could do that with like Yikes. spam or something. I swear that'd be possible. Liquidized yeah. spam. Ugh. Spam is so disgusting, bro. Those little, little containers that it comes in. Just yeah. plop. So nasty. I prefer my... Yeah, my the meat on my sandwich I prefer to look like wet cat food when it comes yeah, to please. Uh. Oh goodness gracious. Those are our two questions. That will be it for this week. I will say big shout out to Brad Broyles and his server, the Bradcast server. Yeah. They are doing a pretty big tournament, I believe, at the end of February. I believe February twenty fifth. Uh, 25th, yeah, I want to say. I hope. I hope it is. I hope it's uh, then. Talking about the, the free tournament? Yes. Is... It's, it'll be 300 modern. Five rounds of yeah, Swiss. February 25th. Max, no top cut at all. So that's cool. PM yeah, CSP. Saturday, February 25th. Look at that. Didn't you know February had a 25th? Boom. See? It's, e <laughs> it's easy. So he, it's a free tournament. So get in there. Get new. He wants new people to play the game, mostly. It's got a lot of 
kind of some Silver Age, some Modern Age, but real figures prizing. Brad normally does cash prize tournaments. This isn't a cash prize tournament. This is like a stuff tournament of figures. So it's fun. It's cooler that way. In my opinion, it's great. So he's going to be giving away all this cool stuff. So why don't you just go ahead and get in on this tournament and you can win some stuff. And it's free. It's literally, it's a free tournament. The start time is at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, Saturday the 25th. And if you want to just, I don't know how you get into the server, but I, if I can invite people, I think basically I ask anybody, I'm sure Brad will have a million. He's already posted this places, which is literally a link to his server. So if you look at the Bradcast show on Facebook or on a lot of Facebook groups, he's probably shared this to already or Discord servers that you're in. He's probably sh- maybe shared it to if you're in like the ROC Discord or something. But yeah, go ahead. Check out this tournament. I don't think so far there's there's no max. Yeah, so far there's no max. So get in there. Get new people in there playing the game. It is on Roll20. It is all online. So yeah, Roll20 sucks, but it is a solid way to play the game. It, it gets the job done. So go ahead, try it out. There's your shout out, Brad. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming it'll, I mean, at this point, it'll be using the Batman team-up rules, the most current rules. It won't be using the new map system that we were just talking about for all this junk um but yeah looks like a lot of fun i might actually uh might actually do a roll 20 tournament again it's been a long time do you know why we are listed as inner circle on his page i don't know i've only played like literally one one I've, yeah tournament. i've never played on like i stay yeah. in his uh discord just for whatever reason but maybe I've it's never played there. if there's a few different podcasters it looks like you me uh, Tony Bruno, we got Tyler Spees in there, we got Brian. Okay. Um, some people that aren't podcasters either. Uh, I guess Devin, you know, there's just like a handful of podcasters, it looks like. Maybe that's the criteria for it. I guess. So, yeah. Why? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Strange okay. to me. I was just like, hmm, why, why am I tagged in this? We get, we get to be a part of something. Yay. Yeah, I'm special. I don't yeah, it's from us. Oh. Ooh, Tristan Halverson is going to be in this free tournament. Yeah. So, you know, freezy win, free win there. Free <laughs> win, baby. Yeah, you get signed up against Tristan, boom, free win. Yeah, if you're like, why is Calder wearing a uh, Doctor Strange outfit? That's just Tristan. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, that's his awesome profile icon. And Ethan is also has commented. I don't know if he's going to play, but Watcher Calder is also interested in playing the tournament. So would see him fun yeah too much fun well if you want to collect some iconics or you're ready to put in some pre-orders from spider-man you know where you should do that calder that's should I do that, right Simeon. you should do it at coolstuffinc.com it doesn't matter what you were gonna say because you should do it at coolstuffinc.com <laughs> the only place to find cool stuff in stock every day seven days a week 24 7 365 <laughs> hero clicks Check them out at coolstuffing.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Okay, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.